Hi, welcome to Graham Cracker Time. Today's story is Mr. President Goes to School. And it's written by an author friend of mine, Rick Walton, and illustrated by Brad Sneed. See these great papers at the front? Mr. President was having a crummy day. The National Gopher Society was demanding that gophers be allowed in the rose garden. Gophers, cried the White House gardener, why, they'll turn my lawn into Swiss cheese. Then there was the problem of the ping pong table. Mr. President loved playing ping pong, but Mr. Vice President had told a visiting troop of Boy Scouts they could chop it up for their marshmallow roast. Finally, there was that call from Madam Secretary of State. Mr. President, said Madam Secretary, Bulrovia is threatening to go to war with Snartberg, and vice versa. It's the sticks and stones issue again, sir. What should we do? Not another war. I don't know, Mr. President sighed. He hung up the phone and sat thinking of a happier time and a happier place. Then he smiled. He pulled a long coat from his closet, tucked his head under a large floppy hat, and put on a fake nose and glasses from an old spy kit. He slipped out of the big white house and walked exactly seven and a half blocks to a place where the world was a little simpler. Well, well, who do we have here? asked a white-haired lady. A new student? Mr. President smiled and nodded. My name is Mrs. Appletree, said the lady. What's yours? Lewis, said Mr. President. Such a nice name. I had a student, student named Lewis once. He's an important man now. Mrs. Appletree led him to a table. I hope you like finger painting. I do, said Mr. President. He slid his fingers through the globs of green paint. That's very pretty, Lewis, said Mrs. Applegate. What is it? A ping pong table, said Mr. President. He was feeling better already. After finger painting, it was time for recess. Mr. President made two friends. He chased a squirrel and spun himself silly. Back inside, he and his new friends made a castle out of blocks. I get to be king, everyone shouted. Come now, we'll, we're all friends here, Mrs. Applegate said. Friends can always work things out, but I'll bet you're hungry. It's hard to solve problems when you're hungry. Mrs. Appletree passed out milk and cookies, and soon, with full tummies, everyone lay down for a nap. When they woke up, it was story time. Everyone sat crisscross applesauce on the carpet, and Mrs. Appletree began to read. Several times, she stopped and asked questions. But raise your hands, she would say. Polite people always raise their hands. Mr. President raised his hand. He answered three questions, two of them correctly. Our day is almost done, said Mrs. Appletree. What very important thing do we still need to do? The hokey pokey, the children shouted. 
They put their right legs in. They put their right legs out. They put their left legs in. They put their left arms in. <laughs> they put their left arms out. That's not quite how I do it, but. And they shook it all about until the bell rang. Mr. President laughed. I love the hokey pokey. Yes, Lewis, said Mrs. Appletree. That's what it's all about. Mr. President skipped all the way back to the White House. There you are, cried the Secretary of State. We thought you'd been kidnapped. The Prime Ministers of Bolrovia and Snortberg insist on seeing you right now. Mr. President's shoulders sagged. Have them come to my office. Then he brightened. And prepare some milk and cookies, would you please? Polite people always say please. Mr. President sat on the big oval rug and waited. The two leaders were horrified. Prime ministers sit in grand chairs, not on carpets, and especially not crisscross applesauce. They looked at each other and frowned. Mr. President patted the rug. Please sit down. We're all friends here. Each man lowered himself to the floor. Well then, said Mr. President, I hear we have a problem. The angry prime ministers began to shout, Ninny, nincompoop. Now, now, said Mr. President, before we speak, we do what? The two leaders looked puzzled. We raise our hands, said Mr. President. The prime minister of Bolrovia slowly raised his hand. Yes, said Mr. President. They are throwing sticks across the river at us. You are throwing stones at us, you doofus, the prime minister of Snortberg snarled. Oh dear, there's that name calling again, said Mr. President, but I know what might help. Mr. President asked Madam Secretary to serve the cookies and milk. When all the cookies were gone, the Prime Ministers yawned. It's hard to solve problems when we're sleepy, said Mr. President. His new friends nodded. At last, they'd found something they could agree on. After they awoke, Mr. President said, Now there is something important we must do. The hokey pokey. The two leaders shook their heads. Prime ministers do not do the hokey pokey. Try it once, said Mr. President. They put their left arms in. They put their left arms out. They put their backsides in. They put their backsides out. The second time around, the prime minister of Bolrovia really shook it all about, which made the prime minister, minister of Snortberg laugh. That was fun, he said. Can we play another game? Sure, said Mr. President. Let's build a castle. We can take turns being king. Finally, Mr. President had the White House chef mix up some finger paints, and they all drew pictures. There wasn't a stick or a stone in any of them. Now, Mr. President asked, what were you two arguing about? The two prime ministers stopped painting. And for an awful moment, no one spoke. Then the prime minister of Snortberg did a very brave thing. Surely we can work something out, he said. We're all friends here. The prime Min minister of Bolrovia looked at him and smiled. Marvelous, cried Mr. President. I can't wait to hear how everything turns out. Um, before we go, said the Prime Minister of Bolrovia, could we? Oh, yes, one more time, said the Prime Minister of Snortberg. 
That's what it's all about, said Mr. President. And they did the hokey pokey. The next morning, Mr. President looked out his office window and sighed. He pulled a long coat from his closet, tucked his head under a large floppy hat, and put on the fake nose and glasses he had found in an old spy kit. Then he slipped out of the big white house and walked to a place exactly seven and a half blocks away. where the world was a little simpler. Isn't that a great story? I love that, and I love doing the hokey pokey. Thanks for coming. Bye-bye.